What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today got David Devont and his spirit wife and their album Shiny on the Inside. Full album reaction for our friend, longtime patron supporter of the channel, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Always appreciate you. I will tell you up front, guys, the music will not be in this video, so if you want to listen along with me, check out the Vimeo link below. You just want to know what I think? Hang around right here. I'll also tell you, this is an album that doesn't have a lot of information out there. So Ian gave me all the information that I'm really going to have on this album because there is not a Wikipedia on this album. There are no lyrics on Genius for this album, although I did find the lyrics on an obscure UK site. So hopefully they're right as I'm following along. But let's jump into this. Ian says, one of my favorite albums released in the last year of the, of the last millennium. David Devont and the Spirit Wife followed up their 1997 debut, Work, Love Life, Miscellaneous which Trey did a reaction to for Ian. So that's up on the channel. I'll link that one on the end screen. With the harder glam rock inspired Shiny on the Inside, released in July of 2000. Their style had never set well with the Brit pop of the mid 90s and their art rock had built a royal following of fans who would craft props to bring along to gigs to enhance the atmosphere. Channeling the spirit force of the English magician David Devant, the band, which is the vessel, which is Mikey Georgeson, who's the lead vocals, guitar, and keyboard, the Colonel Jim Edgerton on bass, and Graham Carlo, Professor Rimshot on drums, created a more uniform and less quirky album with a harder sound. The band lineup had changed temporarily, losing the veteran guitarist Foz Foster to be replaced for John Pope in the accompanying theatrical Spectral Roadies. Iceman, who is Nick Curry, and Cocky Youngin, who is Gary Smith, were missing. The performances were stripped back to showcase the music. Thankfully, the Vessel was on a roll and managed to produce an album that matches their debut, Pound for Pound. I found that Georgian derived the name for the band from a secondhand copy of My Magic Life, the autobiography of the great English stage musician, David Devon, who lived 1868 to 1941. One of Devon's stage illusions was to produce a floating apparition of his spirit wife. Georgian said, I knew it was lazy just to nickname the, or just to nick the name David Devon and his spirit wife, so I decided to research the man. I read the book and his nickname at school was the same as mine, Monkey Face. Our motto like his is all done by kindness. He explained the idea behind the band. Quote, it's quite simple, really. As a magician, Devant didn't really fulfill himself. So he said, I shall walk down the corridors of contemporary music. So he chose us. I am his vessel. Hence his new stage name, The Vessel. So there you go. So we're going to start off with Radar. Ian says, guitar heavy with opening track, very different from Work, Love, Life, Miscellaneous to this single. Set the tone that is something different, and Ian grades every song, which I always enjoy. He gives this one an eight out of 10. Radar, really good way to start this out. Almost a minute of just guitar riffing and instrumentation to build this up to kind of, I like when songs do, it's a right pick for an album opener, right? Because it kind of brings you in, draws you in with uh, like, what's going on here? When is he gonna start singing? It kind of is the takeoff to the plane, so to speak, to use it. Use an overused analogy, but I'll do it anyway. The Vessel, which I'll just call Mikey. Um, fantastic guitar work on here, right? The guitar work, the whole soundscape is great. Uh, the Colonel on bass and Professor Rimshot on the drum. I'm just going to use their names like that. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy that one. The lyrics, somewhat abstract, like, I don't know, we're in outer space, you're famous everywhere. He's world famous everywhere but Earth. You disappeared from my radar, you disappeared, and I don't know where you are. Just look behind the 15th nebular. He's in the wig of a 50s movie star. You disappeared from my radar, you disappeared, and I don't know where you are. It's more just the way those lyrics work with the instrumentation and, and the way the vessel does it. So a really good album opener. Now, we have the second track, one track, mine. Ian says, a smooth track, relaxed crooning verse with a soaring chorus. It opens with an interesting electronic noises, which reappear later. Some nice lyrics with the obvious sexual context. He gives it a 7.5 out of 10. One track mind, definitely a different soundscape on here. Once again, the Vessel's guitar work is to stand out. Great lyrics on this, and it does this build, like Ian said. You know, most of it's a slow, slower rolling. I talked about it in the slower parts, which is most of the song. I really think the vessel sounds very similar, just the, the instrumentation, but also his vocal delivery to some of John Wynn's solo stuff, not his Beatles stuff, but his solo stuff. I, just, I found some similarities there, but uh, the song's a little abstract as well. I do see the sexual uh, overtones in this thing, but you know, when you've got a one track mind like mine, he ends it out. You got to leave the world, leave the world behind you and just stay at home and go blind. I'll let you kind of 
there's a little cliche in there. I'll let you kind of figure that one out. Stay at home and go blind. You never know what you might find. You stay at home and go blind when you've got a one track mind. Um, so some obscure stuff here, once again, lyrically, but really well done. Man, I don't know which one of these two songs I like better. And they're, they're vastly different, which is quite the compliment to them. Next up is Dangerous Dilettante. Uh, Ian says, heavily distorted backing guitar and enjoyable over-the-top vocal performance are a highlight for me. Not particularly striking lyrics. Ian gives it a 7 out of 10. Dangerous Dilettante. Once again, a different song. First three songs, quite a bit different. Uh, I'm probably with Ian there. It's not my... Uh, the other two songs I like more, let's put it that way. But I do like this. It's, it's catchy, man. He's a dangerous dilettante. A dilettante is a person having a superficial interest in an art or a branch of knowledge. Yes, I had to look up exactly what a dilettante was. The lyrics, like most of them here so far, have been somewhat abstract, but right when he sings, beware the dangerous dilettante, it's very catchy. He only does things to up the ante. Uh, let's see, he's got a, lot, a little bit of what you fancy. He's a clear and present danger to society. He makes up all of your anxiety. So um, just a really well done song. Again, man, I like all three of these songs so far. And like I said, all three of them are different. Now we go into the song 21. It's been a long time since I've been 21. Uh, that's another story, isn't it? Ian says, The vessel is back at the peak of his storytelling powers for this song, which appealed to me at the time. As I was 21 at the time, Ian says, was heading for an 8 until the final bridge and chorus take it to a 9 for me. All right. 21, another really well done song. I mean, lyrically, this guy waited till he's 21 to, you know, lose his virginity. And um, that's kind of the premise of this song, in my opinion. He starts out, Father, forgive me, I feel disease. It's been 10 weeks since I visited your niece. I asked her to stay. I'd never have guessed she would be my guest. Sweet sister, save me. I can't pretend I've never needed anything for the weekend. I saw Our Lady and I came undone. I was 21. 21 are altar boys waiting for the heavens to open and say, go ahead, my son. I'm 21 all alone and waiting. Now the party has begun. You're 21 again, entering a world of pain. An altar boy is waiting for the heavens to open and a voice to tell him, Go ahead, my son. And then towards the very end, he says, it's too late when you're 22. So we get a little spoken word almost for towards the end of it by uh, by the vessel. But really catchy song, right? That ending break, it's everything. It's just super catchy. And, and the guitar work of the vessel is uh, is kind of what drives this thing. Vocal delivery, once again, reminded me a little uh, Lennon-esque. Now we go to Sex Maniacs. Ian said, initially this song was a skip for me, but over time it's grown on me. Still the weakest song for me. The odd bubbling sound effects and spoken samples initially annoyed me, but are like old friends now. And my favorite parts, 7 out of 10. Sex Maniacs, not the subject that I thought we'd have here. I do see what Ian says about the electronic stuff at the beginning, the voices that can kind of come back uh, towards the end of the song. So probably my least favorite song, but the way the vessel delivers stuff, I just, I like his voice. I just like the style. Sex Maniac. It isn't about Sex Maniacs at all, right? He says, I'm the stranger in your bathroom and I haven't left for years. You've been putting out my bottles and wiping up my tears without complaining. When I'm talking in my sleep at night, you are haunted by my efforts to keep you awake. I'm frightened of the sex maniac. Love turns to revenge. Every morning when I wake up, I wonder, what does it mean to be dancing with a stranger in my strange recurring dream? Um, you are haunted by my efforts to keep you awake. And then I'm frightened by the sex maniacs, all that stuff. So... I think he's in a, a, a loveless relationship, sort of. She's kind of just with him because at the end he's like, let's see, you can light a candle on a faraway beach, something to remind me that you're just out of reach. So there is no love left in the relationship, yet they're still together. I think that's what he's talking about when he says, I'm the stranger in your bathroom and I haven't left for years. Like she puts up with him, but she's not in love with him. And really, that's sometimes a lot worse, boys and girls, than the person just leaving to live in that. Uh, day after day and even year after year so probably my least favorite but not a bad song at all now we're up to the halfway point basically there's 12 tracks on here but really just 11 because the last track's only 55 seconds but six track one after another ian says this is high praise right here my favorite track on the album and indeed it's my favorite david devont song full stop and he puts in parentheses or period america so he's helping the american here understand what full stop means but i, I got it when I love, what I love about this song is everything, from the vocal delivery, how it builds, the theatrical guitar work, the wonderful heartfelt lyrics. I can't help but feel this song every time it's played. A 10 out of 10, perfect score from Ian. All right, 
One thing after another, Ian didn't oversell this thing. I mean, on first listen, I don't know if it's a 10 for me. No song is a 10 for me on first listen, but it's really good. And the longer it went on, the more powerful it became. And I think the lyrics are the best lyrics so far on this album. You know, he's just talking about how, how things have gone wrong and things just keep going wrong. It says this chain of events is making no sense to me. I'm not, I'm still not clear how I got here. Oh dear. The pain is immense. Personally, I blame the parents. I don't know why. I just roll over and die. It's one thing after another, but I'm still your lover. I don't know why I let you do those things to me. So it tells you a lot from just the very first part of this song and that first chorus. And then he just says, you know, we were doomed from the start. Uh, I'm at, all at C going from A to B. It's one thing after another, but I'm hoping we can recover. So the first part, he's still your lover. Now he's hoping they can recover. On top of the cliff, the rope starts to fray. Like it's, it's going downhill. And then he, he talks about a lot of other things here. And he said, I know the pain is immense, but personally, I blame the parents. There's a fire out on the wing. And I was hoping you might ring. And then it ends with it's just one thing after another. And I'm hoping we can recover uh, control of this blast, I think, to flame the fire out on the wing. So um, really well-written song. Really kind of puts you in it. If you've ever been in a relationship and you've lived long enough, you've probably been in a relationship with a significant other where... You know, it's one thing after another, man. This thing's just going downhill, but you still hang on, right? Even though you can see the, the proverbial ship is sinking or he uses the fire on the airplane wing, right? You still stay in it going, well, you know what? If I'm persistent, man, maybe, maybe this thing's going to work out and it just keeps spiraling downhill, but you're kind of stuck in it, wanting someone almost to save you from it. Now we'll go to the second side, kick it off with Space Daddy. Ian says this was another single as commercially unsuccessful as the album, like this album did not do well. I don't know why, because it's awfully darn good so far. Glam rock inspired anthem that has a great catchy chorus and some enjoyable guitar work. The vessel continues pushing his voice to the limits and multi-layered vocals at the end are wonderful. Nine out of 10. Space Daddy, just crazy catchy, right? You need a Space Daddy. So it starts out Space Daddy, you need a Space Daddy. It's funny how you never gave me solutions. It's lonely when you're waiting for doomsday. You're selling me your personal revelation. Save it for prosperity. You need a guru, a guru daddy, some kind of spaceman daddy. I don't know what the heck this song is really about, but it, it really doesn't matter just because, I mean, the Vessel's guitar work, once again, his vocals, um, Professor Remshot on the drums, fantastic. I, I don't talk about the Colonel much on bass, but uh, that bass work is, is fundamental to music like this, right? It's going to take a back seat but it has to be there. It's a foundation of it. So really good song. Now we're up to Groover. Ian says, a bit of a breather from the highs of Space Daddy and One Thing After Another. Not a song, I think, that stands by itself, but in its position in the album, I think it works. It has some nice lines such as, I'm just a crooner from the bottom draw. 7.25 out of 10 for Ian. Groover, some interesting guitar work, uh, as always, by The Vessel. Um, not my favorite on here. Maybe my least favorite. Nothing wrong with it. It's still a good song, but... So it's, I'm not the groover you thought I was. That was my brother in my open top. I'm not the lover you're looking for. I'd rather hover than go outside. But I can learn to say sweet things. I'll fight my way through stones and slings. I won't hope you remember me because it's all a case of identity. I'm not the guru you're looking for. And then there comes that line that Ian pointed out. That maybe I'm just a crooner from the bottom drawer. So I'm not really sure exactly what he's talking. I mean, he's not the guy that, uh, that, that this girl probably... I guess is who he's singing to, wants him to be, but uh, you know, he can kind of pretend and kind of figure these things out as a lot of people do in life, but I could be off. I'm not, I'm not hanging my hat on that's what this song is about. Now we're going to get up to the title track, Shiny on the Inside. Ian says the moody and atmospheric opening to the title track of the album clears to deep, to a deep vibrating bass and the vessel's vocals. Another lyrically strong song with a suede feel to it. 8.5 out of 10. Interesting way to end that. I don't even know what that was exactly, but title track, shiny on the inside. As Ian said, the bass work from the Colonel was fantastic. And his, his shining moment so far on this album. A very haunting song, especially in the first half of it. Is there anybody out there? Because I've got a window of my time to share. I'll meet you in the Horsefly Meadow. My biography's in every bedroom. Is there anybody outside? Because I've got a little pride for you to swell. You made me go tongue-tied. Is anybody out there who wants to know? Oh boy, I dreamt about you last night. And this repeats, this, this next part repeats in the final verse too. You came to me dressed all in white, head to toe. I know we both deserve a holiday. 
somewhere we can meditate. We're still shiny on the inside. So I'm assuming this relationship broke up. He's all alone in solitude, but he's still thinking about her. Even though they might appear broken on the outside, they're still shiny on the inside, right? Everything's still okay. They can still pretend that everything's okay. That's kind of my take. Once again, lyrics, his writing, the vessel's writing, it's a little abstract on a lot of things. I enjoy it. It works perfectly for these songs. So if you're a big fan, which you probably are because you're watching this video, don't hold me to those lyrics. I'm not dying on those lyrics. You guys know better than I do. Now we're up to Here Come the Imposters. And it says, fast paced with the urgent keyboard tapping, driving the song with the heavy guitars fighting Mikey for dominance. Clever arrangement of song, toning it down to ramp it up and up and up. Eight and a half out of 10 for Ian. Here Come the Imposters. Also got Mikey on the keyboards on this one, right? This is much more keyboard driven than anything at all we've heard on here. So a nice little change up there, but I, you know, Mikey does everything here. Uh, you know, it's, it's got a little motif in here on Mr. Hyde. I closed my eyes and saw Mr. Hyde. And then later on, because they can't decide exactly what links it to Shelley, I guess we're talking about Mary Shelley and Frankenstein. So the imposters, you know, here come the imposters. They know what to say. They can make the right noises day after day. You and your cheap little dreams. You can't say I never try. You bought me a coat without the seams. Uh, so, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was fine. I, I like the keyboards being different. It's probably one of my least favorite on here. That's that's nothing against the song at all. It's a very strong album. Now we go to Take a Deep Breath. Ian says, strong ending to a much more musically consistent album. He gives it an 8 out of 10. There's still one song left, but it's not really a song. So let's jump into this one. Take a Deep Breath. A very instrumentally rich song, so I think that's a good way to end it. I know we got one little track left here, but um, a very uh, serious song because what makes you think you're so dumb, what makes you think you're no better than anyone when you lie in the bath looking up at the ceiling and you start to laugh as your face goes underwater. I just thought I'd like to warn you, look out, there's a chance you might meet you. Take a deep breath and ask yourself the question, is this my death or is it just a new direction? Take a deep breath and go, oh, oh, oh. And then what makes you think so right? What makes you think you're, you know, better than anyone? When I turned out your light, I looked under your pillow and I found the gun. When you're walking around the corner, I just thought I'd like to warn you, look out, there's a chance you might meet you. So at the very end, so you ask, is all there, is this all there is? Can you always know what the answer is when you're walking around the corner? I just thought I'd like to warn you, look out, there's a chance you might meet you. And the song kind of finishes out with that same sort of chorus. So a very serious song, you know, talking about death and are you sure this is really what you want? And why do you think you kind of deserve that, I think, in a lot of ways? Um, we've got one last track. Ian says the album ends with a short non-song track, Your Nearest Exit, which is a fun book. And it's only 55 seconds. Let's check it out. All right, Your Nearest Exit. You saw me 20 seconds into the song. I'm like messing with my headphone. Like, is there anything on here? So just a little, a little closing where, you know, the stewardess, the flight attendant is telling us that, you know, where the nearest exit is. So really a smart way to book in this album for sure. Before I get into my favorite tracks, Ian says this album is a study in melodrama sensationalized, but the ingredients were sensational to start with. And no matter that it's over the top, they pull it off. Ironically stripped of all the theatrical performance stage art elements of the debut, this album feels more spectacular then it's precursor. Why was the album and the band in general so overlooked commercially, unsuccessful, and largely ignored by the general public? I think tastes had moved on from the indie Britpop wave that Work, Love, Life, and Miscellaneous had rode on and this harder glam-inspired sound, although totally brilliant, just wasn't where music was heading. I like to think that's what the band wanted and the loyal fans like keeping this life-enriching album a bit of a secret. I'll get to his last thoughts in a second when I get to my grade. But we're going to get to my favorite songs, which are going to be a bit front loaded on the album, though I don't, there wasn't a track I didn't like, right? Honorable mentions for me, Space Daddy. I mean, even when I say that, I can hear that, that chorus in my head. And one track, mine, the second track is really good. Phase Radar, the opening track, 21, and Ian's fave, one thing after another is up there for a reason. So a really, really good album. So before I get into my album, great. Ian says, for me, this is the album of my early 20s, which is saying a lot because Ian knows a lot about music. My friends and I took every opportunity to see them live at every gig. The whole audience knew every word. This is the ultimate David Devon album for me, and it gets an emotion-filled 9.5 out of 10. The art one, he says. I always remind people, it's the first time I've ever heard this album. There's really nothing I can kind of learn more about the background of it. Ian gave some great write-ups, but 
So on, on first listen, as I'm getting to know this, I'm going to give this an 8.25. I think this album is great, man. It's great. I love the sound. I don't know why they didn't get over. You know, I come across this a lot in, in bands we come across in like the late 60s, early 70s. There was so much competition that so many great bands has never made it to the forefront that should have. And this is another one, obviously a different time period, late 90s, early 2000s when, uh, when, when this stuff was coming out. But an excellent album. So thank you, Ian, for bringing another gem to the channel. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're watching this, I'm guessing you're either a loyal watcher of the channel or you're a David Devant super fan. So give me some insight in the comments. Tell me some stuff I don't know, which there's a lot to tell, I'm sure. And if you'd like to support us in any way, like Ian does, check out the Patreon link below or the patron link and the end screen. The patrons make this thing go. Also, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. We greatly appreciate it. Until next time, guys, I will see you.